Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at a CPA exam simulation that you could see on the BEC exam that deals with ratios. Now, when it comes to ratios, you can see ratios on the BC, BEC exam. You can see ratios on the FAR exam, financial accounting and reporting, and you need to know the ratios about the auditing exam. Now in the future, the BEC exam is going away, but the material in the BC, BEC exam will be tested in various specialization. So financial ratios is something that you need to be familiar with. And that's the first thing we look at when we are looking at a simulation. So the first thing you, you ask yourself is, you look at the simulation and immediately, you don't have to think about it a lot, this ratio is about financial ratios. And this topic is important. Now, what should you do if you are giving a simulation like this one on the exam? For one thing, you should be very happy because the C, uh, financial ratios are easy to understand, easy to apply, especially if you are using Farhat lectures. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So let's go ahead and get started to see how we will solve a simulation like this one. Well, the first thing is, let's look at the exhibit. You are giving the definitions, the analytics definition for various, for various ratio so you are giving the account receivable the formula asset turnover the formula so you don't have to memorize it that's that's good news and you are also giving the valuation matrix matrices for certain items like the cap amp capitalizing capital asset pricing model just take a minute and look at those don't don't look don't take more than a don't take a look more than a minute because we already figured out that the that the simulation is a drop down menu just you have to select something from the menu and the topic is ratio so we answer two questions about the simulation is what type drop down menu and the topic is simulation and also if you look at it all what they all what they want us to do this is even easier than a multiple choice question it's basically they're asking you they're giving you a financial ratio and they're asking you to select what type of a ratio is this so we already know what they're asking and where to find the answer the last thing we want to answer to answer is easy because if you know ratios, you know where to find the answers, okay? So, task one, the controllers of Kettles Corporation provided you with a list of financial ratio and asked you to determine the correct category for each ratio. And believe it or not, in the real world, as I mentioned, ratios are covered in auditing, they're, covering, they're covered in FAR, and they're covered in BEC. In the real world, you would use ratios in financial statement analysis, you would, you would use ratio in, in auditing, if you are performing an audit, before you start the audit, during the audit, and after the audit, and you would use ratios when you are preparing a financial reviews. So ratios are important. And Farhat Lectures does a great job. I take pride in helping you understand ratios inside out. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we will answer these questions. I mean, you're going to see a simulation like this. It should take you less than five minutes to complete. I'm going to show you how. Now, it's going to take me more minutes to explain, but if you are ready, it should take you five minutes to complete. So you would read the instruction for each of the following ratios in column A. Right here, select the option list in column B, the category of each ratio. You should be happy if you get something like this. If the ratio does not belong to any category, select not applicable. Each item in the each item included in the option list may be used once, more than once, or not at all. So these, you know, it could be once, more than once, or not at all. Starting with days sales and account receivable. Well, I hope you know what is days sales and account receivable. Okay, it measures what? I mean, you can see the ratio if you like, if you would like to, but basically it measures how long it takes a company to collect its account receivable. So how long does it take the company to, to collect its account receivable? What type of a ratio is this? Is it asset utilization? Is it liquidity? Well, when you heard the word liquidity, it has to do with debt and specifically short-term debt. It cannot be liquidity. Is it long-term solvency? 
Well, liquidity and solvency, they're kind of the same. The only difference is long-term solvency is, is long-term debt rather than short-term debt. Is it market value? Well, asset, account receivable, doesn't tell us much about the market value of the company. Profitability, the ratio of profitabilities are, are, they would involve either net income or return on something, return on asset, return on equity. So I would say day, day sales and account receivable is a form of asset utilization, how well you are utilizing your asset. In other words, how well you are collecting your receivable, utilizing your asset. But on the exam, you want to memorize which ratio in each category. First, understand them, memorize, and this is how I can help you. Equity multiplier. Well, well, it cannot be asset utilization. Uh, liquidity, it's short-term debt. Long-term solvency, let's hold on this. Market value. Market value deals with your stock, uh, how well your stock is doing. Equity, this is like, could be misleading. Equity, well, it could be, it may not be, but let's see how you can find out. Profitability is something to do with your return. Now, if you are not sure, if you suspect it's market it's market value, it's not market value, but if you suspect this, what should you do? Look at the analytics definition. So look at the equity multiplier, look at that, look at that ratio, and you would see that the equity multiplier is total asset divided by total equity. It has nothing to do, it has nothing to do with the market value. So just in case you are not sure, this is how you kind of say it's not market, it's not market. So if it's not market, what's left really is long-term solvency. Let's see if it makes sense just from the ratio. Since you don't have to memorize the ratio, you are giving the ratio, but you should know the ratio. Total assets divided by total equity. What is it telling you? It's telling you total assets. Total assets is how much assets you have in total. Remember, assets assets remember assets equal liabilities plus equity so let's assume for the sake of illustration for the sake of illustration total assets divided by total liability uh, let's assume for the sake of illustration you have $100 in assets and you have $20 in equity total assets divided by total equity equal to 5 okay 200 divided by 20 of equity equal to 5 now what should you tell yourself what else do you know what would you know about this what you know about this if 20 dollars of my assets of my hundred dollar of assets are coming from equity eighty dollars are coming from debt so what it's telling me in a sense it's telling me how much in a sense it's complementing my ability uh my ability to know how much do i have in debt okay so this ratio measures the company financial leverage although you don't see the word debt in there but i know if 100 assets 20 is equity I know $80 is debt. Therefore, this ratio deals with long-term solvency. Again, on the exam, you don't do this. On the exam, it should take you a minute, less than a minute. Inventory turnover. What is inventory turnover? How well you are selling your inventory. How, not how well, how fast. The faster your inventory turnover, the better off you are. Well, inventory turnover deals with your, deals with your, asset utilization, how well you are utilizing your asset. Because if you really think about it, first you have inventory, you sell it. How fast you sell it is how well you are using your asset. Then this inventory is sold on account. How fast you convert your account receivable into cash has to do with your asset utilization. So account receivable turnover, um, also it's there's an, another issue called account receivable turnover, which is another form of day sales and account receivable, how long it's taking you to collect your money, and account inventory turnover, or there's a ratio called day sales and inventory, they're all form of asset utilization. Price earning ratio, let's assume you don't know anything about this ratio. If you go to the formulas that you are giving, which is price earnings, it's easy. PE, which is price, PE, price of the asset divided by the earning, price of the share, price of the asset, price per share, divided by the basic earning. Well, if you don't know anything about this ratio, once I see the price per share, I'm dealing with the market value, with the market value ratio. Why? Because the price of the stock is a market value. Otherwise, make sure you know it. I mean, this is my favorite ratio. I spent 15 to 20 minutes explaining this ratio. P is my favorite ratio, and it's the most quoted financial ratio in the real world. So it's a market value. Quick ratio. Maybe this is the second ratio you would 
learn about after the current ratio. Again, if you don't know what the quick ratio is, it is quick assets divided by current liabilities. So it's your, uh, as it should be here, uh, we have current ratio, current assets divided by current liabilities. Do we have quick ratio? And a quick ratio, which is quick asset, cash and cash equivalent, short term marketable securities and receivable divided by current liabilities. Even if you don't, if, even if you don't know it, once you see they are divided by current liabilities, they're measuring your ability of short term assets, specifically liquid asset, in comparison to your current liabilities. Well, that's liquidity. Liquidity means liquidity ratios measures your short term ability to pay that. Therefore, the category is liquidity, liquidity. Return on equity. Every time you see the word return, return on equity, return on asset, return on I don't care about something else. Once you hear the word return, it has to do with profitability, the profitability ratios. How much common stockholders are earning uh, from net income, return on equity, how much are they earning, a percentage. Times interest earned. Well, we're dealing with interest. Times interest earned. Times interest earned is how well, how many times you are you are using your interest. To, how much, how much income do you have to cover your interest? So, uh, times interest earned. Let's assume you have just for the sake of illustration. Let me use some numbers here just to show you how you would look at this. If you have ten dollars in earnings before interest and taxes, ten dollars and you have $2 in interest, again, the answer is five. So $10 in earning before interest, $2 in interest, the answer is five. This is your called times interest earned. It means how many times you can cover your interest. If you have four, $10 in income and $2 in interest, you can cover your interest five times. So when it comes to interest, immediately it's not asset. It could be liquidity, but not really. Not market value, not profitability. If you're, if you're confused between liquidity and long-term solvency, interest deals with long-term debt. So long-term solvency. Can you pay your debt in the long term? Therefore, the answer is long-term solvency. Again, it took me a little bit of time to select these questions. If you are really prepared, and I'm saying if you are really prepared, if you're using four hat lectures, it will take you less than five minutes, less than five minutes to answer this part of the simulation, less than five. Let's take a look at part two. Um, Cattle's controller want to understand the effect of certain business scenario on specific financial ratios. And this is very common thing you want to know, whether it's for the auditing exam, the financial accounting or reporting, or for BEC or the for the future specialization. The table below present two different scenarios and financial ratios documented in column A and column B respectively. Indicate the effect of each scenario on the associated ratio using the option list. So basically, they're giving you the financial ratio is asset turnover. Now, if you don't know what asset turnover is, the good thing is they're here they're telling you what the asset, they're giving you the definition or the ratio for each one. Asset turnover is sales divided by the average asset. So if the sales are 100 or 1,000 and your average assets are 10,000, 1,000 divided by 10,000 is 10%. It means from your asset you're generating 10% in sales, how well you are utilizing your asset. Okay, that's fine. Now we know what the ratio is. Now the, 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 the question is, so let's assume net income increases from 700,000 to 800,000. So we have more profit due to a decrease in accrual employee compensation. Why did that, why did we have more profit? Because we lowered our employee expenses. Okay, that's fine. What's the effect on the asset turnover. Well, let, let's take a look at this. Asset turnover is sales, which is reducing employee expenses does not affect my sales. What's the effect on average total asset? It has nothing to do with assets. It, it's expenses and maybe current liabilities. So the answer is no effect, no effect, no effect. Be careful, net income is not the same thing as sales, okay? Because it, if it affects sales, then it would affect this ratio, whether it's up or down, well, depending if it's we have more sales, it's going to increase it. We have less sales, it's going to decrease it, but sales is not involved. Let's take a look at this ratio. Interest expense increased from 80,000 to 90,000 due to additional debt taken by Carol. So we have more interest expense. How would that affect times interest expense? That's all what we are told. 
if that's all what you are told you have more interest expense let's go back to the calculator and if you have more interest expense so if you go from 10 divided by 2 equal to 5 let's assume we have more interest expense 10 divided by 4 now we have more interest expense it's going to lower our times interest i'm sorry uh 10 divided by 4 is 2.5 it's going to lower we went from 5 we were able to cover our interest expense five times now we can cover it 2.5 it's going to lower i mean this is even using common sense you would know it's going to decrease our interest expense now once again what i'm going to tell you is this you should be lucky you should be lucky if you are using farhat and you get a ratio simulation because if you if you work with farhat on the ratios you will maximize it it means if you use my material um once again stay calm when you have a simulation and uh, have confidence in yourself prepared well and you will be fine you will be fine don't let simulation overwhelm you good luck study hard and i'm always here to help you